Okay, you're given the general equation of an ellipse centered at the origin where the length of the major axis is 2a and the minor axis is 2b. And we're going to revolve the top half of that ellipse around the x-axis to create an, a prolate spheroid. And we want to find a formula for the volume. Now, there's the equation of the ellipse. For the upper half, we want to solve for y and give the positive square root. That's the height of this little typical rectangle right there. And that's what we're going to revolve about the x-axis. And this is a formula for the height of that rectangle. And this is what the definite integral looks like. Uh, we could go from negative a to a and say pi times the definite integral from negative a to a, but uh, since this is an even function, we could just double from zero to a. And of course, it's the radius squared. And there's the volume in that case, and it looks like this is the result. Okay, so the question is, how do we get from here to here to here? So here's the general equation. We want to solve for y squared, for y, I should say. So we'll subtract x squared over a squared from both sides, multiply both sides by b squared, and then take the square root of both sides. And since we want the upper half of the ellipse, we'll take the positive square root. So there's no minus sign here. And so there's a formula for the a typical rectangle on the interval from negative a to a or from uh, zero, to, zero to a. There's the formula for the volume. And we want to find an antiderivative for this expression. This is the radius squared. Let me just make sure applying an exponent of 2 here. <clears throat> so the antiderivative of the b squared is just b squared x. Remember, b and a are constants. Uh, here in the second term, I'll raise this exponent by 1, which gives me a 3. Then multiply by the reciprocal of the new exponent gives me this 3 in the denominator. And now I want to evaluate that from 0 to a. So I'll put a in for x. That gives me ab squared for the first term. Put a in for x in the second term. And I get a cubed to b squared over 3a squared. Of course, I could say, and I'm going to subtract put 0 in for x, but I'll just get a 0. <clears throat> and then it's a matter of algebra from there. Uh, we can get a common denominator by multiplying numerator and denominator in this first term by 3. Uh, these a squareds cancel out. So 3ab squared minus ab squared is 2ab squared over 3. And multiply factors together, there's your answer. Okay, that's a formula for the volume of an oblate spheroid. There you go. Hope that helped if you have any questions. Post a comment.